take a roll call just so just say I, I i can see you on the thing but uh diane here present uh, and holly here and kelly yeah uh, i'm not seeing jay here uh carol's coming on and i'm here all right so we have a quorum um we're recording i think at 6 33 tonight um are there any uh other uh agenda items that anybody wants to add uh to the agenda tonight mm -hmm. hearing none we'll move on um First order of the business is approval of minutes from January 30th. Thanks, Holly, for sending those notes. They were very helpful to just put in the minutes and turn to the discussion last time. Oh, okay. Because I couldn't make the meeting. Yeah. Gotcha. But uh, that uh, that's a nice supplement. So that, that was very good. Um, any um motion to accept the minutes as as presented from january 30th uh, i'll motion to accept second anyone i'll second it okay all those in favor say aye or raise your give me a name hi dan, hi, dan. Okay. Not twice. And I think we've got a quorum, so I will approve that. Peter, I need to mark myself as a abstain because I wasn't at the meeting, so I can't vote on the minutes. Okay. Carolyn, Carolyn supposedly calling in any minute. Yeah. Well, I think before we get into the actual agenda items tonight, then we'll just give her a, a minute um, to get in and, and be active in the meetings. Which I think she was at least in the... Uh... Here she comes. There's a phone yeah. line. Hi. Hi, I'm calling in. I don't know why I couldn't get in. I was just on a Zoom meeting, too. Um, you know, the CIPC meeting. So I don't know why it didn't work. So I apologize. Uh, Carolyn, uh, Holly just sent you a, another link. Did you get that? Yeah, I tried it. I tried it, and it wouldn't work. Huh. I, I don't know why. I mean, it gets to the... I, I clicked on it and it got me to the allow and then launch and then nothing happened. No, you didn't see me, right? No, no, you're not here. Yeah. Well, I'm just doing it again, just in case. Yeah, I'm try sitting it one more here. Time and then we'll go on. Yeah, no, I hit launch and nothing ha is happening. I have no idea why. It's okay. Just go ahead. I'm I'm on the meeting. Okay, we've just done the minutes and approval of the minutes. Uh, do you want to? Do you have any uh, concerns with the minutes? As long as you're here. No. Okay. No. Nope. So they're approved uh, with all, and, and Holly abstained because she wasn't at the last meeting. Okay. Uh, first item up here is fireworks fireworks update. Uh, is that um, from you, Carolyn, or Chris, or somebody? Yes. Well, I can. Uh, Chris has a formal proposal from North Star um, Fireworks, which I forwarded on to DCR, and they are reviewing it. And I checked, just checked with them on Friday if they needed any more information, if they needed the height of the um, fireworks burn off or anything like that. And uh, they said no, and so they're still talking about it. But I think because we're getting, I'm getting a little nervous about the timeline, as is Chris, 
Um, I think I'm going to reach out to Elena, who is the staff person for Joe Cumberford, and I'm unfortunately going to have to start pressuring them. Um, yeah, because Carolyn, uh, the North Star won't sign um, a contract until we have the permit. So a sort of they're, they're keeping the date open, but until the permit, you have the permit, they won't they won't sign the contract and won't let us put down a deposit. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to go to Joe Comerford's office, and I, that will be the excuse: is that we we have the date singled out, but we have we do not have the ability to send them a deposit or sign the contract. So actually, that's a really good excuse um, to be using. I I hate, I mean, because they have been really responsive. DCR has been really responsive and talking, you know, at least talking. So um, I hated to be awful by pressuring them, but I think we this is a good excuse. So, what you so I will use this. Yeah, this is I'm going to use this as an excuse. Perfect. So hopefully this will get resolved. If um, if I have any information between now and next month, I will um, send it to Peter so that he can, you know, blind copy everyone so it's not an open meeting violation. But um, if not, let's put this on the agenda for next month again. Okay. Any other so we know what we're doing. Questions. All right, moving on. Um, Kelly, you're on. Postal postmark update. Uh, so thanks to Marie, we got confirmation that the South Deerfield postmark was approved. So both have been approved. Um, oh, wonderful. Yeah. So I think we can move forward now with figuring out what kind of event we want. Um, I know Robin's still working on getting the stamp, but I mean, the, the biggest hurdle was getting it approved. So um, Marie's offered to help me. I have, I have a lot of ideas, but Robin had presented the idea of the two kids being able to make the first stamp on an envelope. So I thought that would be kind of fun. I know Carolyn, you had mentioned doing it at maybe before a select board meeting or something like that, but I, I would really like Robin and if and if Charlene's available to be involved because they were implemental in getting this moved along. Um, but I could check with them on how that would work. But I, had, I have ideas, you know, we have a little reception, we could do something for, you know, like maybe the time capsule have kids come, they can write a letter to themselves, and then they can get it stamped. I don't know, I have all sorts of ideas. I think that's fantastic. We can um, post a selectman's meeting for any time. Okay, Kelly, we don't have to have our set rotation. I mean, if they want to come, obviously, we'll get most coverage from a cable, you know, um, TV, because it is televised to do it before a selectman's meeting. Mm -hmm. But we can do, we can post a selectman's meeting, you know, during the day during, you know, kids, you know, after school, whatever, whatever works for you. Okay. Okay. So don't be hindered by that. We'll just, you know, have a select board meeting. We'll just post it and show up. Okay. Does uh, anybody we have want any to, thoughts on the only thing we do, uh, Well, uh, the only thing we do want to do is make sure that Jonathan um, from uh, FCAT, uh, you know, televises it so and records it. That's the only thing we want to make sh absolutely sure of. Well, do you want it? Do you need to have it live streamed or can it just be recorded and played? later oh no it can be recorded and uploaded and however yeah. we want uh, I, it, it, it does not need to be live streamed but jonathan should we want to make sure he is he is televising i mean you know taping it well i i, I volunteer with fcat so i will make sure that if, if jonathan because he's he's still settling into his role as uh general manager there but I'll make sure that if he's not available, that I will have a camera and I'll make sure that it gets recorded and posted. So we'll oh, get it. Oh, perfect. Recorded. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure that the kids are on, you know, it's recorded of the kids. Yes. Because that yeah. would be something, 
that the kids would look back on, you know, 40 years from now or 50, 50 years from now, I mean, and say, oh my gosh, <laughs> I did that. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Biggest- my biggest goal is to make sure all of the kids are available. So even the runner up, the ones that weren't selected. Yeah. And then also if Robin and Charlene want to be there or need to be there, trying to make that work. Yeah. Yes. Oh, then it, might, if, so it might need to be during the work day then, you know, and yeah, if, you know. That's why I say you just, you guys figure it out and then we'll post it as a select board meeting and show up. Okay. All right. I'll, t- I'll touch base with Robin. I told her I'd be in touch with her. Okay. Hey, Kelly, who's Robin? Oh, well, she's the postmistress, right? Correct. Yeah, for Deerfield. Yeah. Old Deerfield. Uh, I just, Old Deerfield. I just had a thought too. If you, I like the idea of the, the kids stamping the envelope, but I tell you, if you get me two of those stamped envelopes and I can come and take some pictures, or somebody can take pictures, I'll make a poster of that event, and we can have that to circulate. All right, my phone is going crazy. It's a snow day. <laughs> so it's calling a snow day. Um, yeah, no, that'll be good. I'll see if we can get that once she's got it made. Holly, oh, I'm happy. To... All the yeah, kids I'm are happy just... with snow day. Um, do we know the age range of the kids who participated, what grades they were? Um, I don't know fully, but the oldest one was sixth grade, and the youngest one I think might have been second or third. We didn't have any high schoolers participating. Okay. I was just thinking if we did do it during a school day, whether it's a sibling or a friend, they just might feel good about, you know, having somebody that's a buddy. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, you don't want to make it where they're nervous about what's happening. If they get a friend to be able Mm -hmm. to come with them, Um, especially the sixth graders. I don't know. It's kind of an age where, having a buddy with them might be a cool thing. I can tell you that the, actually the two that, that were selected uh, know each other. Okay. Okay. So that's good. Perfect. Well, how I was hoping we... the parents would come too, but I'm sorry. That's right. How about we take that very first envelope They have the kids sign their names on it and I can put that into the uh, time capsule. Yeah, that's a fun idea. That's not bad. Great idea. Because, you know, 50 yeah, years from now, you know, they pull out the envelope and they see the name on it and everything like that. It's, yep. Have them include the letter. <laughs> well, they can address it to themselves, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Something like that, yeah. We can yeah. have a lot of fun with this, so. That's a nice More to come. <laughs> yeah. It's all evolving. Okay, moving on. That's great. Uh, parade work group update. Okay, I've got um, a few things um, Kelly and I have um, been working on with our group. Um, Most of the businesses along the parade route have been notified, and that's either in person or by phone call. Uh, We wanted to make sure um, that we don't disrupt anybody's business along the route and they're aware of it. I think we just have maybe two left to be a hold of, or our committee members are working on it and I just haven't heard yet. Um, and, um, we also had one, um, of our work group people, um, talk to the bus lines, um, for FRTA and PVTA, and they won't be affected either. So, um, people are in the loop. Um, we have one solid MC, um, and working on one or two others. Ben Clark has said yes to be in one of our parade MCs. So that was really good news for us. Um, we're, um, we've got some pricing on Santa cans that we're gonna need for the parade route, but we stumbled upon um, Sue. Um, I know that you've been talking to them as well. Um, so we'll have to figure out how we coordinate that. Um, so we can have just maybe one, um, one bill and one set of, um, whatever business, um, it was Carson, Sue, correct, that you worked with? Yeah, Carson's can, he lives over in um, East Deerfield, West Deerfield. Yeah, okay, Deerfield. so um, that's who we talked to as well. So I, I think we'll, offline, we'll need to do some coordinating. Um, we continue to get responses and we're now receiving some of the entry documents. 
Um, so things are moving forward. I don't know if anybody has any questions. One of the things that we're working on is an advertising plan. And I know that's further down the agenda um, because Kelly drafted an advertising plan for the parade, uh, but we wanted to talk jointly about advertising in general. If we're stepping out on our own to do it um, just for the parade, or if we're gonna look to do some mutual um, posting of things through some advertising. Any questions? Yeah, um, Alex, do you wanna take this or as the new president of Friends of Deerfield, do you wanna take this or you want me to take it? Um, I can start. Okay. So uh, Stan, Marie and I um, met today briefly and just talked about um, life in general <laughs> um, and uh, some things that the Friends of Deerfield have been working on. Um, I think it'd be great if we could do joint advertising. Um, I think if the more chances that we have to work together and make things happen, um, I think the better. Um, yeah, that's, I guess that's what I'll start with. Okay. Alex, we were, do, we were wondering do. if, uh, we could have some kind of joint, um, some kind of advertising that advertised the whole weekend. So it's like come home for this weekend or for people coming from away to advertise the parade and the chicken barbecue the next day and the fireworks and everything on one poster. Apparently Chris has a niece or somebody who's a graphic designer who could make a nice display if we had all the details for what was gonna happen. Uh, one of the things, cause you know, the Friends of Deerfield are offering if any classes want to organize a reunion, they could come and it would be a cheap way for them because the, the, the barbecue was only gonna be 15 bucks a head. If they wanna organize, we're not organizing them, but we will you know, welcome them to come to that. Um, and then the assistant principal has offered to do some tours after the parade. So if we had the after parade um, and the, you know, the next day activities all sort of tied down pretty quickly, we could do a nice joint advertising because it also have to be probably an advertisement in the paper too, which would have to be purchased. So we need to make room for that. Go ahead. Um, Marie, you said that you're not, um, Friends of Deerfield is not overseeing the reunion aspect of it, which I understand, but I had um, someone who was involved with a recent Frontier reunion who said, who's who's the point person if they want to do something for their class is there any key names of people they could work with well they can work with me or they can work with stan to reserve because one of the things things we will do is if they want to reserve there's three seatings one three and five and if they want to reserve like you know 20 tickets for that time we'll set up a um a sign that says class of such and such meet here. So we'll we'll assist them in gathering, but we're not going to send out things. And I have all of Betty Hollingsworth's files. She had a lot of contact information for classes up to the early 2000s. And we will happily share that information with anybody who needs it. But I'm not sending out, we're not sending out invitations to people. It's up to the classes to organize themselves. Okay. But they, I think Stan posted something um, that had our contact information so people could contact us to reserve tickets and that kind of stuff, so. Okay, that helps. Um, yeah, I was just contacted because he's a, a, a friend of mine and he said, who do I talk to? And I said, I don't know, I'll find out. Is the posting, Marie, is that on your Friends of Deerfield web? Website? No. No, it's not on the Friends of Deerfield website yet because we're still having some issues getting um, getting that website access to that website. So right now it's just on Facebook. It's on the various um, things. Could it's, we work that up on Kelly? Could we put it on the Deerfield 350th? Yeah, I have a goal of working on like current news on our website on the, okay. the main page. So that would be something that would be great for me to blog out. Yeah. 
<laughs> I find it's nice that Stan's posted things on, on Deerfield now and other people are reposting it. So that's a good thing. They're, they're, they're slowly getting some of the word out, some, you know, to different groups. There's two or three Facebook groups that are, are, are relevant. So we're trying to get them to all of those uh, groups. So, Alex, you had something? Uh, yeah, I, um, I talked to Jennifer today um, and I'm Yay. gonna meet with her. Yeah, so uh, actually I take that back. Uh, she uh, came and talked to me. So, um, so I'm gonna meet with her Wednesday um, and uh, we can work on that. Um, awesome. And she can give me some uh, pointers on the website um, and get the uh, up to speed. Good. Progress. Um, the other question we had from Friends of Deerfield, because we were hoping to participate in the parade, but have not gotten a formal invitation. And we are reading your rules um, today. And it says that unless we get a formal invitation, we can't participate. <laughs> Mother, may I? Oh my goodness. I will get that to you immediately. <laughs> Who should I direct it to? Well, Alex <laughs> is the president, so you can direct it to Alex. Um, but where did you get, can I ask you where you, how you developed these? Is this something that the lawyers did or the, your, yep. your, the town lawyers, the town lawyers, because it's wow. sort of like they've taken all the fun out of the parade that you could only march if you're in a military formation. So we can't have like the little league march or, you know, the boy scouts march unless they're marching in, in orderly procession. And well, it's, it's, you it's know, very like, restrictive. this is, these are, just directives so there's some order um you can't have gonna a walking go, float you it, can't it, have it, a walking it, float <laughs> um what happened is we got the documents from another community who had their anniversary and these were their town documents we pushed them off through um our town administrator who pushed them off to the town attorney this is what was developed um, as I understand, in talking to Casey, um, these are kind of our guide. And is it going to be a perfect fit for every entry? No, but this is our guide. And we will work with entries as they want us to make some modifications. Yeah, this is the first time I've looked at them. But I have to tell you, honestly, it's not very inviting. And it, 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 it's, I, I'm looking at this and I'm like, I don't want to participate in this. Um, it just seems very, very, you know, you, there's got to be a balance between safety and having fun. I mean, the parade is to have fun and to, you know, not be able to even drink water if it's a hot day and people can't drink water. I mean, you know. The, the minutia is reviewed by the attorneys we're trying our best to work with what we have and this is several communities have had documents like this and they've wow. all had parades and they've all been fun and they've all been successful so it's just a guideline it's to say it you know out there but we i know everyone feels bad but as holly said it's guidelines from what you know multiple communities we have to put it out there like that but you know, what we end up doing is what we end up doing. So, you know, there is wiggle room, um, you know, but I can't, you know, we can't say that, oh, these are the guidelines and there's wiggle room, but there is going to be wiggle room. Diane? Hi. Uh, I've, I've walked with many a Cub Scout in a Memorial Day parade <clears throat> and perhaps maybe the fifth, first 50 yards they do look, they look good. They're all lined up, they're doing perfectly, but then they start waving to people and sure enough, they lose their place. Right. You can right. only try <clears throat> so hard to keep them in step. Uh, I think the rules are there as more of a guidance. I don't think I'd, I'd allow it to hinder me. You know, th there are certain things that they don't want you to do, but um, 
maybe they're worded as a safety thing or rules to fall back on if something happens, but I don't, I, I really wouldn't allow it to hinder your fun. You know, walk, have fun, and uh, I'm, I'm sure there's there's ways to just make it work. Yeah. Peter, will you make sure again. that the minutes reflect this discussion, that we will make it work? <laughs> yeah. I have a question. I, I don't know how to wave my hand, but <laughs> um, it does say stuff about commercial signs and commercial plates would not be allowed and you know most of these trucks and tractors that are pulling the floats have commercial signs on their on their vehicles and then there's stuff about you know not throwing candy and there's also stuff about i know when i was in the band we always had parents walking with the band so in case something happened to one of the kids there's something in there about no parents walking with the um, band or no, no little vehicle with it or anything. If you know if some of those kids pass out or something, if it's a hot day, I mean, there's lots, there's lots of stuff on there. The fair parade is one page long. Their application, it's one page, and this is like twelve pages long. And people, the people who want to do stuff, you know, put floats and do stuff into the prairie, they don't know what you're saying that it's that stuff could be waived. They see, they're seeing this twelve-page form. And they're saying, I don't want to be in this parade. It's it's too difficult. You're making it too difficult. And we have not heard that from anyone. You heard it from me. Because I look at this. You and heard it, it from like, me. <laughs> yeah, you heard okay, it from me. But I'm saying the people that we've extended invitations to, we've not heard it from anybody. Well, it's not let me ask because you, you got an email from my daughter. Let me ask you this, Holly. It says here that only people who are invited. But what if somebody, some group wants to, like the women's club or something, wants to have a float? Do you? How do they get invited? They're invited. What? They've been invited. I know, but what if, what if a bu bunch of neighbors say, "Hey, let's put a float together." Basically, the invitation is they reach out to us, they let us know, and then we invite them. Okay. I just want to say that that. Our hands were a bit tied. We had to go through the town. We had to go through the lawyer. I'm not saying that we are thrilled about this either. It took us too long to even get these documents in hand in the first place. But we're going with what we got here. Okay, Kelly, I understand. I'm sorry if I'm being too picky. I'm sorry. I apologize. We're troubleshooting. That's all we're doing is troubleshooting. Well, just want to make sure that you know, like where we can participate in the parade, you know? I get it. And and we hope that nobody feels that way, but Holly and I, it is what it is, you know? So uh, people can reach out to us. We'll gladly, you know, talk them through it. What What is wiggle room and what's not? And, and yeah. we'll go from there. Well, hopefully it won't be a hot day because at 73, over 200 people needed uh, assistance from EMS because it was so hot and they were passing out. So that's why when it said no water or no beverages, I sort of freaked out. It's like, you know, people need to be able well, to drink. It was a two mile parade. It's, yeah. it's, it's well, 1.4. Yeah. Um, and, and Sue, um, I did reach back out to your daughter. Um, I had not heard back from her yet. I think, I think, you know, obviously if someone has advertising on their truck and they're pulling, you know, a, a name on their truck and they're pulling a float, that's not really what we're talking about. Um, Correct. That's fine. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out who's talking. It's Carolyn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, I have a question from the town perspective. Um, I know we are mutually working with Friends of Deerfields, um, but is there a delineation with advertising of what would come out of our budget that was approved at town meeting um, versus Friends of Deerfield budget if we do mutual advertising? How would we approach that? Well, um, if Deerfield, and it's the town. Um, Hopefully, um, the Friends of Deerfield would like to help out 
Um, if they're not, then we put put the, the bill through, Holly. That's all. Okay. It's, it just... certainly is, is a, you know, we have money appropriated for expenses that are not covered by fundraising. So um, if it's a $1,200 bill and Defense of Deerfield are willing to pay, you know, six or $800, then the balance can come out of our account. We just put the bill through for the balance. Okay. We have, we, we, you know, that was my concern was that we certainly had enough money in the bank to cover your expenses. We kind of jumped ahead to advertising. Are we going to cover that separate or are we going to? Well, we seem to be in the mood for looking at advertising. I, I, I have no problem with just jumping ahead um, or considering it now. They're, they're clearly related. Um, so um, I, know I, did, what, um, I I just wanted to say what my impression when I was talking to Chris Harris, and I haven't talked to Alex at all, but um, my impression when I was talking to Chris Harris is that the Friends of Deerfield um, have raised enough money to, you know, take care of a lot of our expenses and a lot of our concerns. And I, I think we can sort it out, uh, you know, really well together and not, you know, have to worry about it. That's all, that's all I want to say. Okay. Um, so I, don't, I just don't want to lose my placeholder. Um, we did want to talk about advertising, and then I have some other questions from the parade work group. So, which way do you want to approach it? Uh, well, let's let's go with the other questions from the parade work group, and that's the item we're on. Okay. So, post parade activities, where are they taking place? Uh, anybody want to address that? Is that you? Is that you, Q? Um, what are the post-parade activities? Yeah, I, I don't think we're really clear on what, what is actually happening. Okay. Uh, can you expand on that, Carolyn? Um, I'm not sure, you know, uh, Chris, Chris had said there was all kinds of, you know, had outlined events on Sunday with with me, you know, what the Friends of Deerfield are committed to. I'm not really sure what we have scheduled for Saturday. That's, that isn't clear. For, I'm no, not for, sa sure. for Saturday right now, Carolyn, um, the assistant principal has offered to do tours of the high school if there are any reunion groups that would like to get tours of the high school after the parade. And also okay. the Friends of Deerfield, we're looking at the possibility because we're, we're renting these inflatable amusements, you know, bouncy houses and, and what's the other thing, Stan? It's a obstacle course or something or, yeah, you're, I you're think muted. Stan, Stan so, you're, but the question yeah. is, would we rent them for two days and have them down here on Saturday and have them up at the barbecue on Sunday? So those are things, questions that are up in the air for us because we, again, want to put what the activities are for the weekend. So we need to sort of decide what the activities are for the weekend. I'm, I'm really um, concerned just about Saturday after the parade because originally we were looking to approach um, the proper authorities for using Frontier Regional for the disbanding point um, between Deerfield Elementary and Frontier Regional. And then there was talk about having some music and or food possibly at Frontier Regional. And so we just need to know to coordinate because we can't be tripping over the same space as each other. Yeah. Um, if there's going to be food and um, bouncy houses and stuff, we couldn't have it at the end of your parade. So I would say we'd have to have it at like 
the, the by the town hall somewhere, you know, behind the town hall. In that, so do you? A, I, I have spoken. There. I have spoken to um, Deerfield Academy, and we would be able to put something up. Hold on. We lost you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we would be able to put, have music in the tennis pavilion, put the bounce houses around the outside and have the fireworks up there on Saturday night if necessary. Okay, the whole idea was to have food things and in have food trucks. The whole idea was to have things in the South Deerfield Village. So people were already at the parade. They didn't have to move to a different part of town. If yes, if we have the fireworks, if we can get the fireworks on Sugarloaf, but we have to have an alternative location for the fireworks. And I don't, you know, we don't know if that's going to go through yet or not. Okay, well, we're getting really close to needing to line up parking, buses if we need it, where they're gonna be, um, sandy cans, where they're gonna be located. So if, we, I guess we need info sooner than later. It seems like by this point of the, the calendar, we would have some of these things shored up. Well, We've been, I've been working on this for as long as I, I mean, as most as I can, this, we're still work, waiting for DCR. So, um, you know, there's not much I can do unless we make the decision just to blow off the, the fireworks at Sugarloaf completely, yeah. just withdraw our application. Make your visit, go make your visit this week. You can, we can always talk to each other online. Okay. I, I mean, I hate to because I I feel like we have some possibility of making it happen, a fairly good possibility. So I hate to pull the application, but if people want us to make a decision or have a cutoff date, you know, I understand what you're saying, but there's not much I can do. Well, the, the area today. behind the town center there, it's in back of the library, probably could get power from either the town center or the library for the bouncy houses, but that softball field is kind of a nice location. I don't know why you couldn't have a few activities there and have music and whatever. Are um, you planning Susie, to use do, that Farley thing? For do we the have games? Day? Yeah, do we have games scheduled there for um, that no, weekend? But you do, okay. you have to have, um, there's not electricity any place. They have to bring in um oh god what are those things called we have um, generators, generators. Yeah, generators. Yeah, they have to bring in generators for all houses. those all those bouncy houses there's not enough of electricity any place okay are there bands already scheduled i haven't scheduled anything okay so i thought that was moving forward there's bands scheduled for sunday sunday but not for post parade we there, I think there's been some communication uh, mix up on what what who is going to be in charge of Saturday. So we can try to get a band on Saturday if everyone agrees that we're going to do the activities in the center of town there. Car Carolyn, I'm sorry to call you out on this, but you very clearly said Deerfield Rec was going to do like an old home days thing after the parade on Saturday. But that was before that we had this whole thing set up to do things on Sunday, the barbecue on Sunday, the, you know, all these activities straight stated, straight stated for Sunday, which is what the rec department is doing in conjunction with the, with the um, Friends of Deerfield. So that's why not much has been planned for after the parade, because it didn't well, seem like there was a desire from our last meeting that, that we were gonna do something on Saturday. Well, I didn't make it to the last meeting and being part of 
coordinating this parade and that being a very important part of what we were looking at for a total day event, I'm, I'm frankly very disappointed that someone didn't bring Kelly and I in more in the loop on this. Well, I think we were waiting to decide whether we were going to have fireworks in South Deerfield off of, off of Sugarloaf, which we don't have an answer for, or we were going to revert to having them up in Old Deerfield as a secondary site. We have to have, a, we can't have them near the railroad. The railroad bisects the whole center of town. So it limits the space where we can, public municipal space that we have available for fireworks. No one has ever directly approached me until I talked to Carolyn today about doing anything on Saturday, to tell you the truth. Well, then Before, I, I, you did. Yep. And I pulled out because I'm not, I am not well. I'm sorry. I'm not. And now I have found uh, alternate, so, not alternate space up at Deerfield Academy, which makes everything way a lot easier than getting tents and lights and permission from Frontier for alcohol and all that and police and all that other stuff that is included in that. And to have everything just moved up to, up to Deerfield Academy and you have a pavilion and you have fireworks and you have food trucks and you don't have to worry about food. It makes, it's a whole, you know, it's half as much work than it was in the first place. And I have also <laughs> found some people that will, who are willing to help me. And that's I, don't, I don't have any issues, Sue, with what you've done. Um, it was Carolyn who said you were going to work to do something after the parade. So that's my misunderstanding. And then, right. And then we've we talked about it at the select board level and we it's been back and forth. And that's why I figured that the, we were doing stuff on Sunday. It was questionable whether we we're going to be doing stuff after the parade on Saturday, but if if people still want stuff on Saturday after the parade, we can try to get a band. We can try to get the bouncy houses. I would definitely say do the bouncy houses for both days. Um, we can do that. Carolyn, I'm. I know I'm kind of all new to this, but um, you know, in, in 50 years ago, they had about 40 people working on the uh, celebration. And this year, you just don't have that kind of manpower. So, nope. you know, people could have their own barbecues at home or, you know, things like that on Saturday and then participate on a Sunday, although the barbecue can only accommodate 600 people. So, um, I, I think what we have to do is we have to we have to decide what we really want on Saturday. And then we make a commitment to like the bouncy houses. Do we want the bouncy houses behind the school? I mean, behind town hall and the library. We can't, it doesn't make sense to do stuff at Frontier. I know Susie was talking about the alcohol and stuff, but honestly, it's not. That's Holly. That makes sense for you. The point, the end point of the parade. So that means we got to have stuff behind the town hall. Now, what can we do behind the town hall? We can do the bouncy houses. We got that. Do people want barbecues and or you know food? I think I would look look to the friends of Deerfield. Can we do hot dogs and hamburgers rather than a barbecue? Can we do um, a band? That kind of thing. Carolyn, Friends of Deerfield is already tied up. We have signed contracts for everything for a Sunday. So no, we can't back out now. We would be losing too much of our our, our No, no, our I'm payments. talking about both days. No, I'm talking about both days, Stan. Okay. Friends of Deerfield I, won't be able to help on Saturday. We're really gonna be okay. busy. Could you be get us okay. food trucks or something? Hello. Could you well, they, I said, wait. food trucks are so much easier than dealing with, you know, a barbecue or anything else if you're going to have something. Waitley had a food truck that was parked near the near the parade, and they did very well that day. But if you had two or three food trucks, you know, park behind can we the do Can we do a couple food trucks then? And can we have the bouncy houses? 
for Stan. Can we have the friends at Deerfield get it for two days instead of one day? Um, I, it's, that's going to be very costly, I believe. Sue, do you not agree with me? I'm, I'm not, not sure what they would charge for that. I don't know for sure. We talked um, about that at our last meeting, Stan. Let's get, let's get back to you on that. But I think I thought we were looking at that possibility, weren't we, Alex, of doing them for two days? Yeah, we were thinking about that. I mean, yeah, let us if, get a cost estimate I, on that. We get back to you. Can I interject okay. a moment? Um, you made a comment recently about there's only so many people. I mean, at this point, there have to be more people out there. There have to be people that are listening to us right now that we need more people, we need more resources. There have been people that have been volunteering. Um, they're adding things on the agenda, but if any of you wanna do road races or kid races or, or, or some sort of sport with the kids, we would really like you to reach out to us and help us be, we're trying to make it a, a, a good event for everybody. It's sort of like the, the story Stone Soup. Everybody gives a little bit so we can all enjoy it at the end. And it, we need people. We actually need people to come forward and help us do stuff because you can see between the between us, we're sort of at wit's end of trying to figure out how we can enhance the evening or uh, enhance the anniversary for everybody. So we'd really like anybody that can call it, contact us, call us, stop us on the street and say, I have an idea I want to do. And it's not like you're volunteering forever. You're volunteering for just a, for a fun event. And that's it. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, and for behind the police station, I'd have to talk to the police and get their permission okay. because, you know, that's their entrance and egress right through there. And there's probably been more people than what I usually have because I have done bounce houses and stuff behind there before that, but there are probably more people and I would have to get permission from them for sure. That would be step okay. one. I will, if you can get back, someone can get back to me about the bounce houses for two days and then I can make sure that the police are okay with that space behind um, town hall. Because we can't do it at Frontier. We already know that, okay? So, um, and we can't do it at the elementary school because it's it's too much congestion in that general area. So it has to be behind the town hall if we're going to do it, okay? Um, so find out about the bouncy houses. Then, then we can try to get some food trucks, and we can see if we can get a band or something, okay? But we can't get a band until we decide for sure that we're going to do something. And the, and the time for the band is running out. So we probably should have a meeting, uh, you know, a, uh, more closer than just a month so that we can get nailed down some of this stuff. Next, next especially, Monday. Especially, especially if we're going to move the fireworks just, you know, up to Old Deerfield on a Sunday or something. Somebody want to propose another meeting? I second it. Um, <laughs> I I think we better uh, I think we better meet the week of the thirteenth at the latest, or even the week of the well, this the sixth is next week, so we better meet like Monday the thirteenth, maybe. Carolyn, do you think there's any student bands, any student musicians that maybe have a little band or something, and you could have sort of an open mic thing and have them have have local musicians come and uh, and uh, play a couple of numbers or something? Or that's uh, geez, idea. I wouldn't. I know Frontier has a has a does have a little band that did some fundraising for the library, but. Um, played for the library it's a, a little subgroup of their orchestra band but i don't i don't know offhand because i don't really you know I'm, i don't really have kids i have grandkids I will, I, will, not... I will check in i'll check in with the high school and see if they have student musicians who have their own sort of outside bands who might be interested in performing that might be kind of cool to have you know local kids or, or alumni I mean, alumni band members would be yeah. good. 
Yeah. Holly is in yeah. to play trumpet. <laughs> Um, and I'm like, <laughs> so. I think we, we have to we have to nail down what we're going to do Saturday that Saturday versus Sunday. It sounds like the events for Sunday are pretty nailed down. That's wonderful. So let's try to sort out Saturday. Okay. If somebody, if you all can reach out for the bands, I'll reach out for the space, and then you will find out if um, friends of Deerfield, if you um can do the bouncy houses for two days okay i think that obviously is a big attraction um susie how do they get food how do you get food trucks lined up i um i know some people who have lists of people too who have food trucks okay so do you think that's pretty um that's pretty straightforward we should be able to get food trucks um so okay so then really what we're trying to do is nail down the bouncy houses and, you know, the band situation. So um, question for Sue, could you give me a call sometime so we can work on this, yeah. on that company that you deal with always? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we'll, we'll post a notice for a meeting on the 13th. Yeah. Time. Right. Okay. And that will be the sort of deadline what we're going to do with the fireworks so that we can sign a contract for the fireworks. Okay. Seems reasonable. We got to take the action. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, like I said, I've been working on it as much as I can. And I feel like DCR is wiggling, but they have not said yes. So I don't have a commitment. Okay, um, Holly, we good with your? No, I have some more questions. Sorry, okay. sorry to digress. Um, um, this could be an easy question. How do parade work group members get paid for out of pocket expenses? And Peter, as acting chair, do you need to authorize anything that gets reimbursed, or as, yep. with Kelly and I being? acting chairs of the parade work group can we just submit things um i've signed everything so far holly i i um i don't know the answer to that i mean it i've i have submitted bills as long as it's on the town budget it's all all the charges have gone in with my signature saying please pay this uh we did some for the cake for example we yeah. had to buy some supplies. So mm -hmm. um, I just got the receipt attached to a, a note saying, please pay this. And they gave it to Pat, and the Pat paid the bill. Okay. Um, to Pat Holly, Crow. If you, yeah. Holly, if you and, and Kelly authorize the, you know, the expenses, or if, they're, if you feel like they're legitimate, then all you do is you send it to Peter. Peter will sign off on it as chair, and then he'll submit it, or someone will submit it to Pat Kroll, and she'll put it in the warrant. Okay. We, you know, we have the warrant cycle every two weeks. So, okay. you know, if you put it in the, the day after, you know, the warrant closes and, and is gone, then it's another two weeks. But if Pat will submit it in the warrant for you, okay? Okay. Do I understand they have to be original receipts? For the auditor, yes. Okay. But if so, you have, if you have I a have photocopy to... that that is, I mean, if that's all you got is a photocopy, then then just submit that. Okay. So I think I can put together original receipts, um, but so I have to take my original receipts, put them together, get them to Peter. He has to sign them, then he has to submit them before. Well, reimbursement is he done. Has the authority. Well, he has the authority to the the final authority. But as a, if you feel that they're legitimate, then yeah, then just send them to Peter, and then and then they go in to the. Just, it has just to have. You, yeah, I mean, if you just put them in a PDF file, just a copy of the receipts and a notice from either you or Kelly saying, uh, we authorize these costs uh, as 
legitimate parade costs or whatever, uh, or out of pocket expenses for the parade, um, email it to me. I'll sign it, email it to Pat, and we'll be done. So you're not getting original receipts then? You're getting a copy? If he will sign off on your, right. He will sign off on the on the the what you get, have sent him. So he doesn't physically have to be there. But he we will need the original receipts for the auditor when he, when it's submitted to Pat to go into the warrant. Okay, so I will put together the collection of receipts, um, scan them. Peter will okay them. And I take Peter's okay with the originals to Pat? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's just because we may do some advertising that would require a personal credit card. Um, so we just want to be sure. Okay. No, um, it's it's well, it's absolutely fine. It's just we need the original receipts for our, our auditor. Okay. And that would kind of lead me to Peter. Are you getting a report where we are at expense wise? So we would know where we're at with our budget? From the town, uh, no, because the only expenses have gone, they've either been related to the oral history program or they've been related to the Kate. No, we have um, postage that's gone through for the parade. Um. I can tell through, you, through the meter. I can tell you, I can tell you what how much we have in the account. Um, just a second. And we've also we have, done photocopying. We too. have right r right now we have thirty four thousand five hundred and fifty six dollars and seventy eight cents okay. left in the account. Thirty four thousand. Five hundred and fifty-six dollars and seventy-eight cents. Yes. I thought we were up to seventy thousand total, and then minus what Peter has spent for the oral history. Um. When did the forty thousand appropriation at last town meeting kick in? Well, um, it should have kicked in. Let's see. I will that I don't know. I can follow up this whole year or um it should have it should have been in there, but that's what our ending balance is right now. Well, we've only spent a smidgen of the thirty thousand committed for the parade so far, so that yeah. means there's no other money left. I mean, really. It doesn't mean that uh, maybe it hasn't hasn't gotten in there yet. I don't know. That's what the balance well, that's, that's is. I have why, the balance. You know, for, right for Kelly and I, it would be nice if we could maybe once a month get a roll up of what the expenses are so we can keep track of things. As far as I know, the only thing that's been paid for out of this money is the uh, um, um, yeah, it should be more money actually, because we, the only thing we paid for is the oral history plus a few little couple things, right, Peter? Yeah. yeah. So maybe this doesn't, and maybe this doesn't, uh, this doesn't take in consideration that at the, the additional money that was voted in the fall. I don't yeah. know. I can check. Yeah. Thank I you. don't see how it could, Carol. And I, I mean, that's, that yeah, no, I, I agree. No way we're missing I agree. Forty grand. <clears throat> yeah, follow yeah. up on that. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's around there somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, I, it's probably just not added in. Um. So, um, um we have some um, bands we are looking to hire for the parade, and. One of them has said they want to uh, to get paid the day of the parade. So my question is, number one, who signs the contracts for any bands that we decide to put into the parade? And two, how do we get a check so we can hand it to them at the end of the parade? 
Well, Peter is authorized as chair of the steering committee to sign off on the contracts. So Peter would do that. What okay. we need is what we need is the bill for um, the band has to go through the warrant, which is cycle, which is two weeks. So we would need that, I would say, a month just to be on the safe side so the check is written because you can't write the check until the warrant is signed by the select board. So we okay. want to, it has to go through the warrant cycle. So I would say a month before you want to issue a check, you need to have the bill, um, you put forward the bill to the, uh, you know, to Pat, same way, Peter sign off on it. Okay. And then we can get the check, and then we can get the check issued and just give it to you. Okay, and, perfect. You know, you just hold it. You can just you can just have it. And when the they show up and have completed the parade, then to your satisfaction, then you can give them the check. Okay, good. And then um who who would we ask to help us with maybe a possible use of golf carts from one of the private schools if we wanted to ask for a couple? Would that go through you, Carolyn? Um, well, I guess so. Um, yeah, so you would, you need a, a couple golf carts? Four. I would yeah, four. I'm thinking. I would say about four. Okay. I'm, I, I, at a minimum two, but probably four. Just so if we have to run the route at all, mm -hmm. uh, we're having two staging areas. Um, so if we have to run okay. between them. Okay. And so you need those before the parade. You need them somewhere Friday. It, like you Friday, know, so you Friday. have them all. Yeah. So you have them all day Saturday. Okay. Well, I mean, the parade's at two o'clock on Saturday. So if we got them early Saturday morning and they were picked up after the parade, then that would right. be acceptable. I don't think we need them more than the calendar day. Uh, uh, all right. I will see um, what I can do, okay? Okay, thank you. That's all I have for questions. Kelly, Thanks, do you have Alex. any others? Nope. Thanks, Holly. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Um, the next section is the history working group updates. Uh, I'm going to try and make this really quick. Um, I gave my first talk uh, at Northfield. Uh, on the Sokoki, and we had over 200 people in attendance. Uh, went over wow. very well. Um, in fact, we had to line people up in chairs along the wall and hanging off the rafters practically. Um, but it went well, and uh, we've uh, <coughs> re-videoed the uh, presentation, and we had two oral uh, people collecting the the talk on tape and uh, she's going to work on uh, editing the final uh, tape for uh, review out on FCAT and up at, uh, I'm not sure what the public TV station is up around the Burnett's and Northfield area, but it'll go there as well. Um, the next thing, the next talk in this series is what I'm giving to on the founding of Deerfield and its early settlement. And that's on March 26 at Frontier, the auditorium. And I will try and get some advertising out. Um, you do what time? Uh, this is at 2 to 3.30. Thank you. Yeah. And um, if we can arrange it, we'll have some refreshments afterwards, but uh, I'll try and get some advertising uh, materials out to everybody, but uh, we can use 
obviously the uh, Deerfield 350, but uh, Historic Deerfield uh, will put out announcements on the on their web page. Uh, we use Deerfield now, uh, and we can probably talk to Chris at the Greenfield Recorder and get something in the newspaper. Perfect. And Rocky, then, can if, can yeah, I just ahead. ask Rocky, can you come to our um, selectmen's meeting like you usually do and do that announcement and public comment, Rocky? Oh, about Peter's uh, meeting? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But I, it's very effective to have you um, talk about it <laughs> a little. I mean, I, I, I announce stuff, but as a selectman's update, but it's much more effective for you to say it during public comment. Right. And when you, when you mention it, it's always at the very end of the meeting. Everybody's gone. Oh. I know. <laughs> well, no, we have, sometimes we have selectman's meet. Well, we're supposed to have it in the beginning, <laughs> but if we are running, you know, if we have appearances and all that kind of stuff, it's tough to get it in the beginning, but we always have public comment in the beginning and it's very effective, I think. No problem. And uh, just planning ahead, there's another talk on April 23rd from 2 to 3.30. Uh, Barbara Matthews, who's uh, on the Smith College faculty, but also is the public historian for Historic Deerfield, is going to give a talk on uh, basically the poor the poor. Uh, it's, it's called Help Us Soon or We Shall Suffer. Recovering Community Histories of Poor Residents in the 18th and 19th Century Massachusetts. But we have a lot of records about how the town has addressed the needs of the poor in Deerfield. So we'll be bringing that a lot in, uh, ranging from having town farms, poor farms since I think the first one was in 1780. Um, and Carolyn, you're lucky in some <laughs> respects that today uh, the selectmen are not the, also the overseers of the poor, because yeah. back in the 19th century, most of the most of their efforts were trying to re get other towns to reimburse them for uh, taking care of their <laughs> residents. So everybody's any poor relief, you had to be a resident of a town in order to get it. And so if, if somebody came in from out of town and was hurt, Deerfield would take the responsibility for finding a, a doctor to set his broken leg. But then he'd ask him, well, where are you from? And he'd say, Shutesbury. So the selectman would have to write a letter to Shutesbury to recoup the doctor's fee for setting his leg. <laughs> and it went on and on and on and on. There's whole books of letters like that. But anyway, this, it's very complex and very in, in interesting in terms of, of a topic. Uh, uh, Peter, so all, are all your events on Sunday? What's that? Are all your events on Sunday, your historic yes. talks on Sunday? Yes, okay, Sunday so afternoon. Uh, I think we need to advertise, you know, the historic talks, you know, Sunday afternoon, come, come, you know, out for your Sunday afternoon, you know, uh, history in Deerfield series, you know, we need to, we need to publicize the whole series. Yeah, it's on the web. It's on the 350th. Right. But I, um, Rocky, when you talk about it, you need to talk about all the series, this whole series that's going to happen. Okay. Ring a bell as a town crier. <laughs> this this well, is Carolyn. Think... Why we need to jointly talk about advertising and get yeah. you know even our known events for the next several months out there and publicized. Um, I think our partners I, I up the road Northfield have done a very nice job in getting the word out, and um, I, I think we've got to follow suit and do that. Yep, okay. I agree. Because I, people don't don't know the events. When you when you mm -hmm. ask someone, what do you what what do you think is happening on the three fiftieth in Deerfield? People are not really sure. So you're absolutely correct on that. We need to get a whole calendar out, um, post it, 
in the town hall, you know, the whole thing. Alice, you do know, you want around to tell them what you did on the home page? Alice? We could print out. Yeah, we could print out what's on the home page. Have them available town meeting. Yep. Fancy paper and all. Uh, so the other over the weekend, I put um, I don't know if anybody's been to the town's website yet, but um, on the front page, um, I added a link to the 350th uh, steering committee's page on the town's website, hopefully to um, drive folks towards the 350th steering committee and the website, um, hopefully get people involved and interested. Um, I was just going to look it up. That's great, Alex. Thank you very much. You know that that's really hard to get stuff on our web page. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> uh, just, just quickly, the oral history interviews, uh, that the oral history project is going well. We've done over 20 interviews and uh, it's I've also completed one major project with John Pekarski. We did two interviews with him, but he had about 40 family pictures. So we did a second, we did a second interview and talked about or listened to what he had to say about those family photos. He's go back to the 1930s and the 1950s. Um, so we've compiled that, we've conducted, a, I did some genealogical research for him, for the family, so we can get his great grandfather coming off the boat in New York and then winding up uh, going down to Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, and then up to Waitley, up to Conway, and finally to Deerfield. Uh, anyway, it, it, uh, and I've compiled it all in written format. So it, it's a good example of what people can do uh, if they want to do their own genealogies and um, family histories and that sort of thing. Um, there's two projects, uh, or there's a project underway that Marie's doing, uh, which is collecting, again, other family uh, photographs, uh, remembering Deerfield people, places, and events. And she set up twice a week at town hall, Monday mornings, Tuesday afternoons, and people can come in and bring their photographs um, and record the information about them. Um, Diane, do you want to? Uh... Sure. Um, I'm planning Founders Day, or Peter and I are planning Founders Day. Um, I sent Peter a, a memo and with as with a budget as he asked for, and um, <clears throat> we'd like to ask for five hundred dollars. Uh, the idea would be uh, he, a Farley String Band has gotten in touch with him. Uh, they sound really good. Uh, the Founders Day, we basically want the children to ring the bells. 350 bells tolling in town. The idea would be have 50 kids ring the bells. Uh, they come down, they sign, the sign a book. Uh, I've also thought maybe a chalkboard so they could tally the time as it goes by. Um, maybe somebody can do a timeline. I'm not sure how that goes. Uh, I'd like to get some sidewalk chalk uh, for the wandering kids. Hopefully the chalk, the sidewalks are intact in front of the church. Um, uh, I think if the kids come down um, after they sign the book and tally, put their tally on the chalkboard, it'd be really nice for them to get some pens. Alex and friends of Deerfield, uh, I'd like to, a, a special, only only those kids get these pins. It's a special event. Uh, the logo with maybe a bell on it. Um, I'm thinking 350 to 400. I don't know if they fall apart or the quality. Alex, if we could get in touch with that for ordering something. It doesn't have to be something big. I mean, the most of the pins, what are they, inch and a half with a, a logo? That's something, a very nice thing for them to have. Um, and... Also, Peter asked, hey, can we enhance it somehow? And I started thinking about um, 
Ah. I'd like to have a can drive. I've reached out to somebody to let's do a can, a food and can drive, get the food through the triad, get it to uh, people in town that might need food. I've reached out to um, a group that does cooking at Stone, Stone Soup Cafe. I haven't gotten a reply, but I saw the article in the paper. I thought they'd be really nice if we could get them to just sell cups of soup during the can drive while the kids are ringing the bells, while people are looking at the, the pictures the Marie's collected, counting the stars, just, um, and suppose, I, I would like a casual, casual event where we start the, we, we recognize Deerfield's beginnings, but not without spending a lot of money as, mo as opposed to people just sort of hanging out with each other enjoying the moment and um, that's about it. And I have no questions, I don't need anything uh, other than the proposed budget for $500. Hopefully we use less. Um, Stan, I would like the Jubilee poster, the poster for the banner from the Jubilee, if we could, uh, if it could be moved to us uh, for the May 7th weekend, I'd really appreciate it. And other than that, I have no more to say unless there's questions. Um, one of the one of the other things, just to chime in a little bit, I dropped by to to talk to the librarian today, which is right next door to the to the meeting house, and and she's interested in doing something collaborative as well. Good, good. So um, they they have some events that are going on. She also uh, suggested um a kind of a storyteller uh and she's got some fabulous guy in mind according to her and i believe you know i believe her he's supposedly top notch and she was going to get in touch with him and see if he would be willing to uh engage for part of that day as well um, one question this sunday right this well here's that's the that's the question right now and I'd, I'd, I'd like to get a sense from folks or, or also, you know, Diane, if you've got a real strong sense, but what happens is there's no school on Friday of that week. It's a day off for the grammar school. I thought it was a half day. Is it a half day? I okay. thought it was a half day. Okay. Yeah. So, the, so anyway, that's Friday. So it's a, if it's a that's half fun. a day, and then Saturday and Sunday. Now Sunday's the real, that's May 7th. But I think it, it's close enough. It could be any one of those three days. The, the advantage of doing something collaboratively with a library would be the six because they're closed on Fridays and sun, on Sundays. Um, but I don't know how other people feel. I, I frankly, for me, it's close enough and I throw in the other thing that if you're there, when this, you know, when this colony was founded, they were in a totally different calendar anyway. So if you wanted to reconcile it, they were on the Julian calendar, we're on the other calendar and there's 21 days difference for the same day using those two calendars. So it doesn't matter, we're close enough. Um, I just wanna comment that doing something with the library solves an awful lot of problems because the library has, you know, is handicap accessible bathrooms. Um, you can, you know, they'll have the bathroom there on the, by the children's thing. Um, we, you have the ability to go a little bit indoors if necessary. The problem with the church is Deerfield Academy isn't going to be working on there at all. So it's, you really going into the, you know, the, 1828 church is probably not a good thing at this point because um, Deerfield Academy has pushed us off until the fall again. So we're, you know, we were a, a whole year behind now when they promised to do something for us. Um, so we're not going to, you know, I can't see us being able to do much in the church because it just is not a usable space at the moment. 
uh, not even the main the main church room that has the pews and the balcony. Well, we're going to have to go in there and clean it up a little bit. Well, there, there's no bathroom, and you know, we're going to have to open it up and clean it up a little bit because it's, you know, nobody's been in there for three years or four years. Well, not quite that. I mean, the the whole guys took the organ apart. They were working in there, and they cleaned up after themselves. And I mean, it's not that. Him, give us an early entry. We'll figure out what we need to do. It's not going to yeah, be I mean, looking for anything fancy. We just want a place where kids can sign a book, where we can post some photos, hang some bells, and uh, it, it, we're not trying to well, impress anybody, but just give us space for them to walk through. What I'll do, um, Diane, is I will have John Pachorik, um, uh I'll call John Pachorik so that whenever it's convenient for you, you could connect with him because he has a key to the church, and you can go in and see what you think. Okay. How's I mean, that? I've, I've been in there pretty recently, Carolyn, and, and uh, it, you know, it, we can take a vacuum cleaner and you know, vacuum the I'm rug, not, but it's I'm, perfectly fine. Yeah, well, I'm not saying it's disastrous, but there's no bathrooms. So if yeah, you do something okay. with the yeah. library, we got bathrooms. We we have the ability to set up food, you know, outside the library if it's a beautiful day, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I, I right, think so it's we'll, much better to try to plan the events outside the church. You can have them come into the church to, to do something if you want, but I, I think trying to do as much as possible at the library is going to be a better, you know, safer kind of situation. Can we get that big tent that goes with the senior center? Can we just put that up in the, in the lawn between the meeting house and the library? Um, you no, we have, you have to have a certified tent company put that up. And I believe they're putting it up in the same place. Well, I'm going to, I'll check. Already. Um, to see when that's scheduled to go up, um, if it's if it's been funded for another year, um, because that tent is, you know, we rent it as a town for you know outdoor safe outdoor space for um, our seniors, but you have to hire a tent company and they pull a permit from the building department and the building department makes sure. That but it's set up safe and I mean it's a big to do really it can't be moved it's not like something we get you know it's not a pop-up tent you can just move is um Carolyn is there a chance that the library can be open on Sunday to allow access to bathrooms or is that not doable well that would have to be you'd have to go to the library for that because that's separate the library is separate from the town they have okay. a, their own Which library you'd have to get permission for the library but if they were going to do an event with you i can't imagine that they wouldn't be interested in doing that you know yeah well, i think the event would be on a saturday uh that's i mean that I, when i when i talked to uh the librarian today she was i mean she's candace is is fine with it i mean she thought that was a great idea uh, but saturday would be the day that they're open uh, and, and that I was when know. they would pay for staff. Yeah, they would pay for staff that day yeah. to run the library. Yeah, they would, but they could set up. She was talking about doing a scavenger hunt in the library for kids, and you know some other things too. So, um, I would be perfectly comfortable, I guess, to to just say let's set it for Saturday. And how's the band though, Peter? Uh, They're the ones that we've actually contact or haven't you uh i haven't contacted i was just no i need to call them okay all right uh they're i think that's that should be fine we um, haven't set a time either i mean do you want to do it late morning or, or early afternoon and just run it through if, if if the kids are in school in the morning then no i mean uh saturday a non-school day. Oh, um, I'd like it to be a family event if we could. You want to do it in the afternoon then? That, that way we've got the heat of the day. 
Yeah. One to three. Can you, can you, yeah, I mean, we'll get I think, one to four or something like that. One to four. And that would be Saturday. I think that's a, I think, yeah, I think that's better in the afternoon because a lot of sports teams are doing in the, in the morning. So May 6th, so you, one to four? Yeah. All righty. Let's try that. As soon as you start to firm up some sort of timeline or schedule of events, that'd be great. I can start posting stuff on it. Yeah, great. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to need 350 kids to come over and ring the bell. It'll be, that's, that's the part of it is to get the, the next generation, the kids that are going to be around 50 years from now to say, I remember I rang the bell. Well, and I know that through, um, they use Parent Square through the school. You can just ask the principal to post something and she'll send it out in her daily news. Great. Good. All right. Um, um, can we approve that money or do how do we go? Yeah, no, that's just what I was getting. I'm, I'm, oh, okay. Sorry. I'm getting tongue tied. <laughs> um, can I, is it okay if we do a sidewalk chalk? I don't know if I need a special permission to get sidewalk chalk for kids to no. draw over sidewalks, no. but is that okay, Carolyn? No. Yes. No, I don't know. Just do that. Just do it. And then, you know, if anyone complains, they're going to call me. So <laughs> you'll say, well, it sounded yeah. like it was a cheerful, good thing to do. Well, and then the just ring wait till come we start ringing away. those bells 350 times. You'll be getting a few calls <laughs> over that one, too. Yeah. We should probably <laughs> let people don't take naps on Saturday afternoon. It ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. I, we'll just ring them you to sleep. Have to, <laughs> you just have to realize that not everyone's going to be happy. But a lot of people look at it and say, how wonderful and how cheerful that the kids are doing this. So it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you got a good idea. It's a good idea. Let it let it happen. Silly. So Once Carolyn, I'm assuming years. that forty thousand dollars is gonna be in that budget. And and can we make it a request uh, for authorization to expend up to five hundred dollars for the uh, Founders Day event? I'm I'm fine with it. I will second that. All those in favor? Aye, Holly. Aye, Diane. Aye, Kelly. Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Peter. Okay. Good. Um, All right. If, if, in... Okay. I just want to. I just want to remind people that you need receipts. The Mastercard that says you, you know, that you like in a restaurant. Sometimes you just get the Mastercard thing that just gives you the total. That that is not what the auditors want. The auditors want what what you are actually paying for. So, whatever receipt or you have, even if you pay with a credit card. Make sure you have the actual expenditure item. That's all. Okay. On the receipt. Carolyn, is it acceptable to actually write it on? I mean, sometimes the, the, it doesn't come out of the cash register that way. Can you write down the item adjacent? Uh, I'm, uh, we, I'm, I don't know about that. They might, it might not be. Because I know the, like in a in a restaurant receipt, or sometimes you get just the total from your Mastercard. You could just get a total. You can't do that. It has to have um, what was actual the like, actual expenditure. For you know the auditors don't accept it, so we can't pay for it unless it shows the you know it tells you what the item is. It if if the cash registry receipt comes out with nothing on it, then they need to have the hand written. They can handwrite on on their letterhead what you expended it for and attach it that way. 
Okay. But it would be like if you went to the dollar store and you only got, you know, a total of ten dollars, then they want five dollars for on their letterhead, five dollars was spent on balloons and five dollars was spent on streamers or something like that for a total of ten. Then you attach that ten dollar receipt to that and then somebody signs off on it. I mean, whoever the clerk is or this doesn't matter, as long as there's a signature. Then you can attach the ten dollar, you know, nondescript receipt to it, and then put that in, and that that would be acceptable. You just need to have some kind of proof that what that expenditure was was actually spent on. What if you were, if you were, that, the, uh, yeah. One, one of the in terms of, I tell Diana Holly too. I mean, one of the things that I. Uh, in working with Pat uh, is that there is a town credit card. And if you have supplies that you need, you may be able to give her a list of the supplies needed and she will order it on the town credit card. Okay. So that, that you know, if you have something in I mind- I was just gonna I, I, submit my receipts. I already printed a copy, my son. Did something through Amazon, and my son sent me a copy of the receipt. And uh, yeah, yeah, well, I know. Yeah, I okay, mean, but I can that do should it be fine. But if you've got yeah. like supplies for you know thinking ahead, you're going to need so many file boards or you know whatever. Uh, Pat seemed amenable to if I gave her a list and the of the price uh, or the quantity. Okay. That right. they have supplies for certain types of materials that they get on a regular basis using the town credit card. And that way you avoid the tax because you're, what we're doing is tax free. Okay. Oh yes, oh, I forgot to tell you. If you order it yourself, they don't pay, for, we can't pay for tax. Oh, yeah. Okay, all righty. So what I, what I, all right, what well I then I will write this name down. Who is the person again? It's Pat Kroll. <laughs> in, in, in the town office. If you're I, I buying something you. that, yeah, if you're I buying something that's taxable, then that's true, and you pay for it yourself. We can pay; we'll reimburse you for it, but we can't reimburse your tax. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. I mean, one of the things we did with the cake was we needed to buy a fairly large number of light bulbs, as well as sockets to replace the ones that had gone out. Oh, so Marie just nice. went online, got a good vendor with a good price. I brought that to Pat. I said, here's the company. And uh, are they comfortable with, you know, rec they'll recognize. And then she has a slip that says, we're a, a, a town entity. We don't pay <laughs> tax. And that goes in with the order. And uh, they we just got a bill back for the light bulb with no tax. And that was it. Excellent. Okay. I learn something every time I go in and talk to her about how to, how to manipulate the system, but um, I, I, we can we can make that work. But just uh, so if you if you haven't bought it yet, that that may be one way to go. Uh, we can get a, a list of things together, plan and and say. Yeah. Okay, we need these supplies. Yeah, the book. And they may have a vendor already. And okay. the, I know one of the vendors gives the town a 20% discount. So, you know. Yeah. We, and, it, and some things are bought off the state contracts, so they're cheaper. Yeah. Okay. I just don't know all the subtle nuances, of, but I'm, I'm sure Pat, and then Pat so puts that on the warrant and then the selectman sign off on the warrant and then the checks get cut cut and distributed, so. Okay, all righty. Okay, I uh, believe we're at uh, update for, uh, for Friends of Deerfield. Alec, you want to give us an update, uh, Marie or anybody else? Uh, yeah, I could start and uh, maybe Santa Marie can jump in. Um, so I, I recently joined up uh, with the Friends of Deerfield. Um, 
they were uh, short a few members and uh, they needed some help. So um, I previously helped out behind the scenes for the Jubilee um, and I had fun and liked everybody and had a good time. So I said, well, let's jump on board and help out. Um, and I guess I am the president. Um, I, that doesn't <laughs> Right. That doesn't really matter to me. It's more about I just they saw your potential. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I I just want to try to make this year the best that we can, and if that's what it takes, then that's what I'll do. Um, so we've met a few times, um, and uh, we've gotten some things done towards the um, chicken barbecue. At least that's what I can speak on because i know some of those things um chris is not here i i wish he was here so he could maybe give any financial um background on that um but that's okay so we've got um i believe we got the okay to have the chicken barbecue um at least from deerfield academy at the tennis pavilion um we have the sandy cans we have the tables and chairs we have the um, band. I think the bounce house is something we're working on still. We're, um, we just need uh, to figure out where they're gonna go. Um, and I think that's still in progress. And the caterer uh, also. Yep, the caterer is, um, <clears throat> I, what do you say? 90% of the way there, um, we're just, basically waiting to purchase the food and go from there. Um, we recently got the tickets and I know we will begin um, getting those out as soon as possible. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, I talked to Jennifer today, so she's gonna help me um, get the Friends of Deerfield website, um, the permissions and updating a few things and hopefully we can um, use that as one point to um, direct people to purchase tickets and get more information. Um, what else, what else, what else? Um, and I think today, just by listening to an update from the 350th, I think some good information about the parade. Um, and I, I'm glad that Founders Day is moving forward. I think that was something that we talked about and um, I'm excited for that as well. I don't know. I just want to do a lot and um, I hope that we can do a lot, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah. I have a question. Is there any more merchandising of any sort coming through? Souvenirs, different things. Uh, are you working on any ideas? Yes. Um, so at the two meetings ago, we talked about um, hats and um, tote bags. And then we still have some t-shirts. I believe we sold out of the sweatshirts. Um, we have a few could... left. Okay. Um, so a few of those. Um, beer glasses. I like that. And the beer glasses, yep. Um, go ahead. If you could have a booth at the Founders Day would be really nice. And perhaps, I don't know if you've already decided on one at the parade. Um, just to make things available. So it's just easier for people to get stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, yeah. And do you still have one of those 350th uh, glasses to put in the time capsule? Yes. Oh, no, 350th. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No. 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 Marie, do you? Jubilee glasses. The Jubilee glasses. Oh, Jubilee glasses. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I can, I'll drop one off at your house someday. I'm Rocky. Okay. And the other thing, Alex, is it sounds like you guys got everything pretty uh, settled uh, on that uh, whole picnic thing. Uh, and you just have you made contact with Chief Pachorik and, uh, you know, for your security mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We're, we're not dealing with the chief. We're dealing with um, Adam. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. What else are we missing? Um, uh, we're looking for another board member. So if anybody yeah. has a recommendation, 
for somebody to be. All the offices are filled, so you don't have to worry about being elected president. <laughs> that was yeah, Alex. Alex was pretty good. <laughs> Stepped yeah, right up. Um, but it's just a general board member, because uh, the the bylaws apparently say they're supposed to be five, minimum of five, five. It could be a maximum yeah. of eleven. Anybody so out there? It's we can have one or more. Know. Yeah. I do want to say that we did nominate Marie to be our vice president. Oh, Marie, thank you. Only because there's nobody else available. So <laughs> we need but I, I kept my name off the bank account though. So <laughs> but I know there's people out there. We just to, it in 2023 is only a year long. It's not a long-term commitment. We just want something from people to give us a hand. As you can see, little by little, every time we have a meeting, there's something a little bit better. We're tweaking things, but we sure could use a little bit of help just to bring your ideas and your energy to help us have a good time. Um, I think it would be really important by the 13th that we have a solid, whatever we have for events that we try to um, get them published because Alex, it was good to go on the website. Um, but it was very disappointing not to see the dates of stuff. So, I mean, we need to get like the dates of Peter's, you know, talks out. We need to get the Founders Day out, the whatever we have for the, you know, the weekend of the parade. You know, we need to put the parade down. Tom Clark's um, having the Earth Day walk, right? Yes. Yes, we, yes, got, Tom's was, on the, we got him on the calendar going up to the yep. apple orchard or peach orchard. It's a really nice the event. only um the only other event that maybe um the friends of Deerfield could reach out to is I know PVMA was thinking of doing um some kind of Oktoberfest thing in the fall after their craft fairs that they you know sort of similar what they did when they um were celebrating Polish um and German immigration um you know remember that like back in the 90s or something I think yeah. it was um, they want to do that again. So um, I, I would hope if the Deerfield, <clears throat> friends of Deerfield could reach out to Tim Newman from PVMA and try to get that on, you know, sort of settled as a date. That would be great because that would, we would want that on the date and that would be a fun thing. Carolyn, well, did you mean the events on the town calendar on the website? Yeah, or we on should, yeah, no, we should put, we should have a solid calendar on the town website. So I was thinking about um, adding a, and I, I haven't uh, posed this to anyone yet. Um, would it be possible to add a community events calendar um, that's separate from like our regular meetings um, so that people can look at um like anything, I, I, anything I, I that's think going so. on. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think we, it just has to be, we have to figure out how to do it. Cause I think the, I think the website allows you to do that. Yeah. There's a, um, there's a few other it. communities that have a split. Um, you can click on either calendar and it doesn't have to just be the 350th. It can be, I don't know, is the school doing something? Is PVMA is, tree i mean it, right um, you can put stuff on there yeah i think i think alex you'd have to find out and you'd have to be able to figure it out because i'm not really sure if anybody has the ability to do that but okay um i think the website that we bought has the flexibility because we bought it based on other communities which does have the community update you know community page i just don't yeah. think anyone set it up Okay, uh, so that that wasn't a no. So okay, I'll um do it. look into it. Do it, do it. Yeah, well, you know, it's just more or less not knowing how to do it. But you're also asking somebody that doesn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we were trying to get a much better um, web page, town web page, and that's why we switched because we were paying an awful lot of money for an awful one. Yeah, that no right. one could work on. I think there's a lot of capabilities on that website um, that we could do. So um, I can look into it. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. All right. 
Uh, I think we're through the agenda. Um, okay. Now we have the advertising piece. Well, okay. I thought we kind of covered that. Well, I, I'm really unclear. I think maybe this needs to be discussed further on the 13th okay. once we have some idea of what's I going think, on. But. I think um, Alex can take it back to his board and say, how do you want this to work? And then we can try to figure out how do we want this to work and how do we get this? Because it makes no sense to do separate. Let's work together. Yeah. So think about how we want to work together for the 13th, okay? okay. And then, then we'll just vote to do it you know one of the things that you might that we we might do is is have a well i don't know I'm not necessarily a, a poster but something that would encompass all the events that are going on on that weekend but we need a full page mean... ad in the recorder and all the papers yeah. that have a list of events when they are yeah. every month so that people see it then we can have separate runoff ads we can have a digital campaign. We should be doing all this right now. Yeah. I, why don't, I, we, I why don't we have something to submit to Kelly or make sure it's submitted to Kelly by, by the next meeting um, as to what the events are so we can put it together and uh, have it ready to go. You know, the different things, yeah. including your, well, your talks around it already, Peter. And I think between the Founders Day and the parade, Maybe we should get just have a blurb ready for her. Stan, include the DA items, uh, anything else we can solidify. And that way, Kelly has something to uh, to run with, to, to, to approach the newspaper with. But, but that's the one of the questions that the friends of Deerfield had is, is there some kind of like name or, you know, title for that weekend? you know, like celebrate Deerfield or or something that would be like a nice banner or just say Deerfield 350th. Dog days of summer. I would just the Deerfield 350 and then just a calendar. No, she's talking about the weekend, right? The parade weekend. Just right? that one weekend. Oh, the we're parade weekend. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean well, maybe we yeah, why don't we think about it? But I, you know, right off the top of my head, I think it's beautiful to say celebrate Deerfield. I, you know, Northfield had light up the weekend that we lit up our cake. They did light up Northfield. And I, I don't think it has to be very complicated, but I think, you know, we have to have something that's flashy enough that it registers with people, you know? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I do want to say that on the 13th, we really need to have everything done because we have started, Chris has already started with with his, with that woman, that designer, I mean that, that um, oh, the woman. Graphic the, designer. Graphic, yeah. you're right. And um, that's why we really want everything down pat so that we can finish that off. And we're hoping that by, at least by the, hopefully by that 18th, we can start, um, um, passing out these, the poster, et cetera, that we're planning on do, making. Perfect. I know yeah. it's short, but we have very little time left to advertise for this, all these activities that's going on. Kelly, do you have a, did you get a, a, a sheet from um, Greenfield Recorder yet on their prices or pricing? You can usually go on their website. Okay. They have that kind of stuff. I mean, I've worked with the media plenty. Um, depending on, you know, we can get some sort of deal or however it works. You know, if we do a package, there's all sorts of alternatives, but. But some of the TV, local TV stations have, usually have community calendars too, right? Yep, yep. One, yeah. Two and and yeah. so don't the papers, like you can get some free advertising with their community calendars. If we send out a press release with all of our events, they might, we get free advertising that way. It's just, we just need to start, we need a consolidated campaign, all of the events, and, and thoroughly, thoughtfully, you know, out. It's kind of driving me crazy. But like I'm saying, yeah. Friends of Deerfield is going to take care of that poster for that the weekend, celebrate Deerfield or whatever we come up with. Okay. So let's let's nail down the calendar. Let's nail down what we want, uh, so we can. And and if the Friends of Deerfield will. Um, work with us on the advertising that's perfect okay 
Mm -hmm. I think we need to have a budget so that we can decide if we can how much we can help with it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, I just looked at the calendar. There won't be it, Sunday the seventeenth is an or it's, June seventeenth is a new moon. We call it a new moon weekend, something like that. And it's a, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but that'll be nice for fireworks if there's no moon out. You know, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope for beautiful weather. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I, I actually have to make a, a phone call, another phone call at before nine o'clock here. So um, if if we can, um, I'll make a motion to adjourn or else um, somebody can, we can continue this discussion and I, I just need to move on here. Yeah, well, I think we're through with the agenda um, and uh, we've all got a work cut out for us uh, for the March 13th meeting before then. Um, but, uh, so that'll be the next scheduled meetings two weeks from now. 13th. Yes. yes. 13th. And, um, so I'll take a motion to adjourn Carolyn. Yes. I made that motion. Oh, yes. I'll I second am. that. Second it. Third okay. it. All those in favor. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Holly. Hi, Diane. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Peter. Okay, we're adjourned.